to call your ideas. Well, that's what this book is, isn't it? Um, we have to do what that woman looks like today. What? Create a research question. What's that mean? Well, what is our stuff about? I, that's what I said to said. I don't want to fit it into a box already. But, dude, it's not a box. No, but I don't want to be like, what do we want to make? I want to just explore and see what we create. I don't want to be like, okay, we're going to create something that's cultural. We're going to create something that's about consumer culture. We're going to create something that's about other cultures and colonialism. And I don't want to do that. I just want to see what's inspirational, what inspires us, and make. That's why I'm bored of sitting and talking. Like, yeah, this will be productive because we'll find out how we can get from the ideas in our heads to can nature. You, if you don't want any ideas, <laughs> that's literally what you're no, saying. No, I want ideas, but I don't want to fit them in a box. Like, I want inspiration. Obviously, I want to read something but, like, oh, that's really cool. Um, let's combine this idea with it and make, not be like, okay, I want to create something on consumerism. Okay, how but can we're I not, we're not that? just doing that because our independent reading has brought us to this point. It's not, it's not like we're narrowing ourselves down because we already narrowed down what we read. We're just labelling what we read and therefore that is what we're interested in. But I just don't want to like make a question. But it's not, I'm not saying make a question, I'm saying like what? Last year we looked at feminism, right? That's why it worked because mm -hmm. we focused. This year, we need to focus on something. Yeah, but okay, so... But we also focused on consumerism last year as well in the media. Yeah, obviously feminism isn't just about the woman. Like, it's, there's a whole bunch of shit, but that's the point. We looked at it from all the different angles and that's what made our work good. That's what we need to do this year. We need a theme. Mm -hmm. And then we need to look at it from different perspectives. And then we need to decide within those different perspectives of looking at it, different ways of practicing. And that's where we can explore. I don't know, what do you want to look at? I want to look at social relations and culture. Whether it be completely political, on a like one-to-one -one basis between people of different cultures, whether it be like food or object or literally culture and social relations. If we want to do social relations though, should we do some performance then? Or I think because reading like all this stuff like about um, artificial health and all these like people, a lot of this stuff is performance because performance is a very good way of breaking social boundaries. Yeah. And even if it's just like it doesn't have to be interactions per se, like talking and stuff, but like that pouring of things into the objects kind of thing. That's that's a social play yeah. on things. Um, that's why I'm saying when we make objects, like it would be really interesting to make objects and then show them in multiple ways. Okay, so, well, because last year as well it was about social relations, wasn't it? So it, that is a common theme. But last year we did feminism and social relations. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we said economic, political. It's like soulful. I don't know how to explain it. Like where you feel you fit, how you feel like a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Does that fit into any of them? That's a question. Well, I assume it just fits into that. Okay. So about, that would be uh, tradition. East, 
versus West, so tradition versus rationality. Okay, what else have we read? Cap versus communism. We've looked at society spectacle. So that's more art critique kind of shit. We've read about no logo, what's that? That's consumer culture. Um, I've read Social Role of Art. That's all of it. Um, what else have we looked at? Artificial health. Yeah. Make these bigger though, because then we can be like, how they link. Then what we wanted to oh, that's the mouse, okay. So how do you make your ideas? How do you make your how do you make practical your ideas? Well I initially I just read something and I see it in a metaphorical sense just in my head. And then Obviously, just we just spur our ideas all the time, mm. and then something will be like, "That's good," and we'll progress it. But we need to learn to get past the stage. I think we get past like the initial stage. Oh, that's good, and then we progress it a little further, and then we get stuck with it being too literal. So we so research then idea. Yeah, but how can we think in a more arty sense? Yes, it's because we're trying. What we the problem with stuff is we're trying to get a message across. So when we when we're trying to spread a message, it's quite hard to do it without actually actually putting a message across, which makes it then too literal. I think that's where the personal thing can come in. Okay. Because I think like, or when I, when I mean, when I say personal, I mean like, therefore it becomes kind of emotional. Kind that's why like I don't know if talking about India, for example, with like India's national food being curry. Yeah. Like, I don't know how personal I find that topic. But it, don't you find the topic of how does someone how, how does it does someone then belong to the culture if their culture has been taken well not taken but like used in a new culture? Don't you find that interesting? Yeah, of course, of course. I'm just saying, like, there may be this nuance that we don't have. Yeah. Would come but I think from a more, from, from knowing a culture 100%. But she yeah. was saying today as well that if you're interested in something, if you, if you become a fan of it, that's when it comes out. And I think we need to zone in. What James was saying, we need to zone in on something and become so fascinated, like with feminism, we just became like, what is this? And then it comes out because we're passionate, mm. it shows. So we need to zone in a little a bit more. So, what about culture? I personally find the, the most interesting thing to be the overlap of cultures and I just like because I like traveling I like going to a place and seeing how it's become how it is like what it, where it is now but how everything else is fed into that culture
in a positive way. I want to make paper. Good. What do you find interesting? Um, I find it interesting because yeah. I find it like this ethos that supposed cultures have and that others don't have. So like, ah, oh, Greeks are warm, ah, oh, English are cold. Like what that means and why that exists and if it is true and if so, why is it like that? And how does your culture like dictate how warm you are as a person? Do you know what I mean? Like why, how does culture affect social relations? Okay. over the summer I read um, I read <laughs> children's question and answer encyclopedia <laughs> and I read the history section all about like ancient history and then British history and some like Native American and Mayan and stuff like that but I just it was amazing how many levels there were that made the culture it was just because being British means like there's so much to it that's been influenced and obviously there's negative things in that but there's just so many elements to it which is uh, like uh, that is what's really interesting because like like all of that stuff economic and political and relations and stuff. It all feeds from this culture thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, even what you said today, how art is traded between like three main ca capitals and that's all because they're economically well off enough to be traded. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, people are like, you know, you can't generalize to a whole population of people and stuff like that. but our political and our economic systems are based on those generalizations. Mm. And what other countries are influenced by is these main... Uh, how do I put it? Like, say, we're all influenced by these main people. Say, like, you name the most famous people in the world, everyone will be able to name them. Mm -hmm. Like, you just say Andy Warhol, he was a massive artist, and so many people will know who he is. So that that's where like monoculture comes in. Mm -hmm. What is this dictatorship of? I want. I don't want to lose our. We have this amazing fan of <laughs> looking at con consumerism and capitalism. I don't want to lose that because I think that that is one thing we're so passionate about. And because it is also a divide between East and West. <coughs> yeah, and it feeds straight into culture and society. Like, I mean, even within Europe, like if we don't, maybe we just focus on the divide within Europe because we're both Europeans and like it doesn't bring in like, uh, do, do you understand what I'm saying? My, my issue with talking about Africa and India. But it's so... In, like it's such a big thing in British culture, the influence of other cultures and their influence on other cultures. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm not saying I'm not saying that's not we shouldn't focus on England or something like that. I'm just saying like I think it coming more from the perspective of like South Europe to Northern Europe, which England is Northern, and like I can have a personal perspective from Southern Europe and you can have it from Northern. That yeah. that's a more like a more personal dialectic than like Africa or India. I know, but I just, that, that, that doesn't, looking at Britain within Europe doesn't really say much for me because they never really influence each other that much. 
Like obviously Romans, yeah. But like I feel like No um, not obviously like independent and then they spread out to the rest of the world, which is But don't you don't you think that Northern uh, Europe has a way a culture and Southern Europe has a different culture? Yeah. But you know them both really well. I don't know them at all. Yeah, but I, I don't know Southern culture. But that's the point. Like that's where yeah, you know both of them. So I don't you know like, culture. Yeah, but you've lived here. Yeah, but doesn't mean I'm culturally here. I'm not. Like I don't understand English. <laughs> My point is that like I, I obviously I live in England and like art has to be about the place I live in and stuff. But I I want to bring in another a nuance from somewhere else. Because I feel like I'm talking a lot about England and I'm not English. Like no, I, I find it interesting because they're they're a world power and they have impacted my life in many ways. But like I feel like I have other I have a, I have a different about, Yeah, I know okay, yeah, I get that say I wanna talk about British culture, but I don't mean British culture, I mean like I don't mean personally want to talk about it. And then talk about India. I mean, that that's what I can look at and find and see all the different influences, and that's where my inspiration comes from. But if I'm looking at Britain within Europe, like I feel nothing. But why? Because they do you not, do you not think? Not well, I just don't think that. No, like in, in, in current affairs, fine. Forget about the colonial history. In current affairs, like you don't see, like England as like the warm. But I don't know enough about the rest of European governments and the pol- politics to be able to say anything. Well, we could just read about it like we read about colonialism. Like you don't, you don't read, you don't study colonialism. No. So. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I think, and then it becomes about appropriation, like. Can we say any? But neither of us fucking Indian. Like, you know, can I really talk about Indian culture? Yeah, but we already, we already said about how we're gonna not look at India from a British to not look at India from an Indian person's perspective of Britain coming over. We're looking at Britain from a perspective of we've done shit to them. What we've now, in English national dish, dish, dish is curry, what does that say? We're not talking about India at all, we're talking about... Pro- no, 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 but I'm just saying, like, I, I solely don't want to just focus on Britain. No, I know, I, I know just that. just British culture, because, like, I, I find it interesting, like, I fucking did colonialism and I loved it. Like, I brought up the colonialism yeah. issue with us. I'm just saying, like, I feel like culturally I can say a lot of other things. Yeah. Which I'd like to say. Especially the divide between. I just don't want the whole thing to be about the divide between the two because. I just think it's interesting to think about the divide between East and West within the West because it exists. Like I don't have to make East and West in like in that in these mystery lands that people don't go to often. Like there is an East and West divide within Europe. Already, do you understand what I'm saying? Like there is a eastern culture in the south of Europe and there is a very western culture in the north. I just think that is an interesting thing to talk about. But how is it eastern? In the sense that it's very traditional, it's very like mystery and folklore and that kind of thing. And like this whole economic crisis and stuff has been the force, like that being forced out of them. They're trying to make them more northern make them more economic in that sense because they are they're very traditional and folklore and like witchcrafty and that kind of stuff there's a lot of like you know and like these connotations with like lazy and all that kind of thing i just think like obviously the s- suppression of black and my, like colored minority majorities actually is a huge issue and i'm not saying like oh will the whites hate the whites as well but i just think like it's a much more easier thing for me to talk about with you. Yeah, I, I guess, but I just, I, all I'm saying is I don't want to narrow down to that straight away. 
Like, I want to look at other stuff too. I want to look at broader culture in general. I want to look at. No, I know, but I don't want to just look at the two. Because it doesn't, it honestly doesn't do anything for me. I don't know enough about the other cultures to be able to say anything about Britain in comparison. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But I just think, like, the way we read about Africa, why not read about Southern Europe? It just doesn't interest me as much. As Africa and India and Asia. Because, we'll say, like, I went to Italy mm -hmm. and there were freaking adverts on the Milano Duomo. Like, I, when I go as a tourist, I don't see that much difference. Milan Expo was advertised freaking everywhere on buildings, on water bottles, in McDonald's. Everything was advertised, and like that was more extreme than being in the UK. No, I'm not saying that they're different. I'm saying that the ones on the cusp of becoming the other one. I'm saying there is a like this mystification of like Africa and Asia and stuff. I'm not saying to not talk about it, obviously, mm -hmm. but I'm saying like it would be interesting to project that onto Southern Europe. But can we get there? If you get, I don't want yeah. to get straight away. No, no, no. I, I'm just saying, but I would, I want to get there because okay. I think that's a very. Well, that's what we we're going to do with the fruit, weren't we, and some of the food and stuff. Yeah, I'm just saying because I think that's where our nuance can come in. Well, I like the fact that we haven't really discussed it yet and it's still there to kind of happen. I'd like us to develop our practice, not, well, not our practice, but develop um, our, our work, make, make stuff, see what comes out and then start discussing this because I think then we could get something really cool out of it instead of straight away being like, Okay, we've got this piece planned, we've got this piece planned, we've got this piece planned, now we need to talk about the next piece. I think we should leave that. Is that, that can be like opening the box and see what comes out at mm -hmm. the end. Once we've looked at other cultures and we'll see how it goes. And I just don't want to, I, I want to do a few, a few pieces on it. Like that's for sure. Well then we'll try to think the rest of the stuff. I think this is them. leading to it anyways. I mean, I'm just saying that just this, that personal thing, the thing that will make it different would be that because no one talks about that i i also found i this does come in kind of but the whole berlin wall thing just fascinates me mm -hmm. the fact that they managed to um half like split a city in half and one side was was communist and one side was capitalist and like I just found I just found that so interesting while I was there. I'm just saying because of like the appropriation thing, like talking purely about Europe would be an interesting perspective because you hear about, you know all these artists that we've been looking at are just white people, you know, like appropriating in a nicer way than obviously the history, like the Egyptian cows, for example. Like, no one critiques it from within itself. What do you mean within itself? Like within Europe, within a white middle class and upper region of the world. No one critiques it within that. Yeah. Everyone just goes, oh, Europe, the rest of the world, or like America, the rest of the world. And I just think that could be our thing, because that's an interesting thing to have and do. But should we do, but should we do the ideas we've had so far? See how we do with like different materials and stuff, and then we hopefully can get them done this week and next, and then. And then think of a final piece, a and small then think of a, new, like a small piece, and a, we can build up to it using our ideas that we've come up with, mm. and then we can then build up a final piece because we'll see where we want to go and we'll see what worked and what didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's.
Last year we did the fact uh, we did a lot about the media, so a lot of us are films. So, but this year we're looking at culture. So we're using things that are very relevant to culture, like objects and food and people. Cool. Um, we're bringing clothes. I need to finish reading my social energy book tonight. How do you make a difference, how little? I think just by slowly. We don't want to be like you look at a piece and go, bam, we just want to slowly change the way people think, see, see stuff. I love how we think like we're thinking the right way. And we want people to think like us because we're right. I think what started happening last year was cognitive dissonance was a very interesting way of doing it. And I think that, that should be a definitely part of our language. An irony. An yeah. irony. I just don't know how this food, like it's very hard to be ironic with food, objects, people, clothes. Like, I think we could do it though. That would be our language then. Yeah. Like, say throwing, that's just, you know, as an example, throwing chili at someone kind of is a slightly ironic. Because you're like, it's... you're being literal about it in a not very, in, in a different way. You're literally being like, it would be really interesting to like get you and Benita to throw curry powder at me. Because <laughs> it's you, you're projecting purely her food onto her as a person, as her culture, and she's projected onto you. But don't you think then that gets too literal? No, because it would it wouldn't just be like she's throwing it at you; you're throwing it back at her. Like we are objectifying the culture by making it its object. Because the culture is more than its food or its sh shoes or stuff. Shoes. <laughs> like, I would even think, what else makes a culture? Mm -hmm. That's so sure we could put that down. Well, what does what culture mean to you? Tradition, to be honest. Like, values that are, that are just passed down continuously. Because they're the things that no one else gets, which is, because food. You could take their food, clothes, you could take the clothes, you can't take the values away. But like, and the traditions and the, you know, like, it's just, it's, I find it fascinating, like, how it's progressed in one place and not in another. Like, why is, why is the family structure in food tradition so strong and it's not so strong in Northern America? Like, why? Why do you think it's not so strong? No, in other words, like, like, I was watching a documentary about homelessness in, in England, and it's just because, like, your your extended family just, do, they don't take you in. Like, your family structure crumbles quite easily. Whereas in Greece, like, even, yeah, that's one, for example, like, never met this woman, is married to Georgia's second cousin, and then divorced and married someone else, and this is the grandma. It's just like, yeah, you can come stay with me. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, completely overgeneralizing, obviously. <laughs> but in, in that sense, like, that value or those kind of traditions, how they're, why are they absent in one and so strong in others? But I don't, I don't see it as absent. That's the thing. 
you might but I don't I see people have to no, I don't say I don't mean absent I mean different let me use a better word like why are they so different yeah but you're you're viewing it as different because you say that in northern countries it's not really there that's why you're saying it's different no I'm not saying it's not really there I'm just saying it's not like as warm as I expect it to be that's because I come from this culture but say like Hannah's family like my friend Hannah mm. <laughs> um, they're German and they're so warm and like they're very like they invite people over all the time and no, 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 but like I said, I'm not generalizing. I'm general. I'm trying. I am generalizing, but I don't want to. To like an entire culture. Obviously, there's people within cultures that aren't like that. I'm mm-hmm. saying like, there's a saying like, you're being Germanic, and that comes from something. You're being like, there's a reason why those kind of things come Germanic. up. Germanic, yeah, but that's because of their very efficient. To yeah, that. but that's a culture. That's um, their culture. Do you know what I mean? So you mean like you, that's an example of generalization? Yeah, like, yeah and that's but it, it stands on some ground. Like, yeah. It's obviously generalization, but it's not not true in a lot of senses. 